Hello builders! Got a big one for you today. You don't got just one, not two, but three animals for you. In the first walkthrough exhibit, we got the capybaras and the anteaters. And in the second exhibit, we have the little, little tapirs. Oh, I have no idea what that accent was, but you know what? We're rolling with it. Let's keep it going. To start off the build, we have a viewing area creating, which will allow guests to see both the anteater and capybara exhibits, and the tapir exhibits. And when it's done, we're going to cover it up in vegetation to make it look like an old Aztec building that's just been overrun by the jungle. And it's always important to remember when you're doing these little circle buildings to always just keep copy pasting it and just altering it as you go just to, to get something you like. As you can see here, I did that a lot. But you know, in the end, it always works out. You just have to have a little bit of patience and probably a lot of persistence. That helps too. And finally, happy with how the dome worked out, we came in and started making in two more. And these end up becoming the sleeping areas for the other animals, and we just kind of merged them in to the original dome. Normally for these sleeping areas, I like to add in a more natural floor for the animals, such as wood or bamboo. But in this case, with the buildings being such a weird shape, I feel like the textures would have not worked out and it would have overlapped in weird ways, so we end up just using this little untextured floor. And sorry about this, I had a little bit of a video glitch, so I lost the footage for building the initial steps of this building. It's just a little back end where guests can exit the walkthrough of the Capybara habitat to continue on and go look at the Tapia. And right here I'm just going to do a quick little fence around the area so guests can have a nice look on the inside if they don't feel like walking through the habitat. And a little bit of landscaping is involved here too. I always like my exhibits to look a little bit layered and not so flat. Flat is boring. So there's a tip for you. If you want your exhibits to look a little bit nicer, just add a little bit of a hill to the back end of the exhibit to create a more raised effect. Or maybe some valleys. Add some valleys to it. Now comes my favorite part of any build, it's the rock work. God knows I love me some rock work. That's when an exhibit starts coming to life, from just a little pile of dirt to looking like an actual habitat. Amongst doing the rock work, I also do the little pathings for the guests. I want them to come up a little bit higher, get a nice view from the back end of the exhibit. And then we come over and start kind of decorating the river a little bit. I want the river to look like it's flowing in from the llama habitat next door, as if it's going through the rocks underneath.
and taking a break from the walk work, we come inside and decorate the little coffee bar bar. I wanted to add in a few little stalls here, just so it doesn't look like a boring old round room. And there's a little, at least a little something for guests to look at. And of course, it wouldn't have been a building stream without the ceremonial approaching of Noctis, our little Bilber kitty. Ready for the cuddles. Of course, before we add in all the details with the vegetation, I gotta come in and get all the little toys and feeding areas for the animals set up so I can build around them. Remembering that we need a little bit more space for this water feeder to work, we come in here, expand the pond, lower it down, and refill it. And in the end, the coffee bars are really appreciated. They love it. They swim down there, and they look like little baby hippos. If baby hippos, you know, were covered in fur and giant rodents. Otherwise, you know, perfect, perfect uh, resemblance. With all the rock work done on the inside, all that's left is come in here and finish off the mountain. It doesn't, doesn't take too long. I just copy paste a few rocks over, add a bunch of trees on top of it, and bam! Jungle mapping complete! Now we come in and start adding in all the vegetation. I start off most of the vegetation around the river and then we work our way into the rest of the exhibit. And to make the backdrop of a jungle look complete, just take a bunch of big trees, fill them near the mountainside, and bam! Looks like a proper jungle in there now.
Another little tip I have for you is when you're doing little feeding areas for the animals, put a lot of grass and vegetation around. That way it makes it look like the animals are grazing when they're eating. And now with that exhibit complete, before we move on to the tapia, we come in and we just add a little bit of vegetation to the top of this little temple to make it look like the whole thing is overgrown. And now it's tapio time. I come in and add a little area for guests to come around the back end so they can have a nice view of the tapirs. So we didn't have much of a choice as this area of the park was quite condensed. So there's the only way I could get the guests in to really see them. Oh, it's alright, because tapirs are shy little animals. They don't want to be near the hustle and bustle of the main street of the park. Here's another stone building tip for you. When you're building a little viewing area like this, and you want it relatively look the same on every side, just make one flat wall or one round wall, and then you can copy and paste it over, and it will save you a lot of work. Just like that. Bam. Following the steps we did in the Capybara habitat, we do something similar here. We start with the buildings, got them all done, and now we do the train editing and we'll slowly merge into doing the rock work. And here I realized it had been a few days since I did a waterfall, so I had to get that itch in and build one. And it feeds into a river that will eventually go into our otter habitat, which will be coming out in a few days. So make sure to check back here for that video.
And here I decided to do things a little bit different than the last habitat. Where I come in and just start doing the back wall first, and then we come in and do the rest of the habitat with rocks. And for a little dab of realism, we come in and take these mossy rocks and add to the bottom right near the water's edge. Now with the last of the rocks coming in done, we come in and start doing the vegetation. And we use a lot of trees in this one. I wanted this one in particular to look like one of the deepest parts of the jungle that we're building. So uh, there's not much light making through the jungle floor, but that's what you expect to see in a jungle. Well builders, I hope you enjoyed this little video where we got three animals added into our zoo. If you enjoyed this time lapse build, feel free to subscribe and like it, do all those little things that YouTube is like asking to do. And feel free to join me on Twitch where I am continuing to build the zoo as long as other projects as well. Link down below. With all that said, I'll leave you builders with this one final flyby through these exhibits. Have a good one. Happy building everyone.